Coming to you from the Hudson Media Group studio, this is Talking Politics. And I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 100 Latino, via the Latino Spirit Online magazine, and of course, the Garden State's most beloved and factually accurate political commentator, Fernando Uribe. Hope you all having a wonderful uh, month of June, hopefully staying cool during some of these hot days. As always, there is a lot to discuss, so let's get started. Here's what I'm thinking about right now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a sentence that's going to get a little heat, but it's okay because I'm ready to defend my positions. And yes, it is the month of June, but uh, I have zero interest in celebrating Pride Month, and I'll tell you why. Now, once again, it's been in the mainstream news. Corporate America tends to go crazy with putting rainbow flags on everything when it comes during the month of June, and that's fine. But here's something that most journalists or most political commentators won't say out loud. They might say at their kitchen table, they might say in their backyards during a barbecue during these summer months, but they may not say it on camera. So I'm going to say it as clearly as possible to make sure that nothing gets taken out of context and to make sure that nothing gets misconstrued. So I'm going to read you a really good quote that I saw that really sums up how I feel, and I know that many conservatives like myself feel the same way. Now, dear LGBTQ+, plus minus subtraction, division sign, whatever. I don't know. It seems like they add a new symbol every week. But if you don't want to be treated differently for being gay, then stop acting like being gay somehow makes you special. Your sexual orientation is neither an achievement nor a holiday. You don't haven't accomplished anything simply by being attracted to the same sex. Now, you might say, oh my God, friend, that's incredibly bigoted and intolerant. No, it's not. What I just did right there was outline exactly a very commonsensical and very rational perspective why I personally don't celebrate Pride Month. Now, let me just start off by saying that, yes, I was raised Catholic, and I'm someone who is still Christian. I'm not overly religious. I don't go to Sunday Mass. I go to church. As a matter of fact, I go to St. Augustine's. For everybody who lives in Uptown Union City, you know exactly where that is. It's right off, I believe, 48th Street and New York Avenue, where it's the church where I was baptized, coincidentally, and where I did not only my first communion, but also my confirmation. Now, being Hispanic, Catholicism is a big part of our upbringing. It just is. That's what Christianity represents in Latin America. But as I got older and I started reading, and certainly as I became more educated and more well-versed in different things, I started learning about things that I don't agree with concerning Christianity. Now, again, it hasn't stopped me from believing in Christ. I still believe in Christ. I still stop by every week at St. Augustine's when it's practically empty. There's nobody in the building. I sit there. I pray. I'm thankful for so many things, whether it's the success of this show, my other media projects, the health of my, my family, myself, my inner circle. Those are things I'm very thankful for. And I go in there five, ten minutes, talk to Christ in my own way, and, I'm, and I'll, I'll proceed for the rest of my day and evening. Now, again, it doesn't mean that I'm sort of rah, 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 you know, pom-poms, you know, Catholic Church and all that, because we all know that the Catholic Church is very flawed. But something that caught my eye this week really, you know, kind of boiled my blood here, because, again, I'm a big baseball fan, and, of course, what went on over the weekend was that five Tampa Bay Ray players declined to wear LGBTQ pride-themed jerseys. Now, the players opted out of wearing the rainbow-accented uniforms during the team's annual LGBTQ Pride Night event, citing religious beliefs, which got me thinking. Of course, yes, they're probably Christians, and there are probably elements of Christianity that they believe in, which, as we all know, looks down on homosexuality. Now, let me just read you some stuff here again, and I'm not trying to conduct Sunday school here. The professor is obviously not teaching here for the summer. But let me just read you some things, because... Again, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to someone who's a very devoted Christian, now I'm not. I'm someone who believes in Christ. I'm someone that doesn't throw their Christianity in your face, but I will stand up for Christianity. I will stand up for Christ because I believe in him. But for example, when we start looking at passages from the Bible, for example, gay pride to many people who don't believe in it conflicts with God's view on marriage and sexuality. That's true, folks. I mean, you look at some of this stuff. For example, here's some passages from the book of Mark and the book of Matthew, for example. But from, quote, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm someone that, you know, I'm for same-sex marriage. I support all that stuff. But again, if you're going to cite religious texts, and that, this is what you're going to go by, such as what those players did and other Christians do, then so be it. 
okay? It doesn't make them intolerant. It just makes them religious, and they're going to stick to their religious beliefs. Folks, it's not just Christianity. Don't get it twisted here. Because the left, in, not just in, in New Jersey, but across this country, loves to vilify Christianity. But you know who else believes in not acknowledging uh, homosexuality or LGBT uh, groups? Uh, Jews, Muslims, okay? Other religions that predominantly have become large segments of the demographics in this country. Um, you want to go after Jews and Muslims? Because guess what? Many of them who are very religious believe the exact same things as some of these Christians. So let's be consistent here. If you want to vilify religion because, well, you know, it's intolerant. Well, call it whatever you want. It's their religious beliefs, okay? You love the freedom of speech, right, in the First Amendment? Well, guess what? Freedom of religion's in there too, all right? So be consistent for those on the left, especially for those in the LGBT, Q, plus, minus, multiplication sign, division sign, everything else that they add to it, it seems like every other month, especially during Pride Month, right? It's like you see all these new acronyms. But folks, here's the reality, okay, that if you don't want to take, pride in, take you know, participation in, in Pride Month, then so be it. It's not the end of the world, okay? Personally, for me, I don't care about it. I'll say it very clearly. Now, again, that doesn't mean I don't care about gay people or LGBT people or people that are marginalized. Yeah, I do. They shouldn't be discriminated against, okay? They shouldn't be vilified. They shouldn't be, you know, bullied or assaulted. No, let them live their lives. But again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm all for be who you want to be. You will love who you want to love. But it doesn't mean I have to be patting you on the back for an entire 30 days. Sorry, that's my right too. And again, I should be able to do that and be free from any vitriol, vilification, or, I don't know, character assassinations because I don't want to, you know, go along with Pride Month. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not going to go along with it. And I'm not being one of these hateful religious conservatives because there are many on the left in the state that will do that, right? You got journalists like well, so-called journalists like Jay Lasseter, little JJ with Insider and Jay. Well, I get it. You know, he's an openly gay man and is all about that. Great, Jay. Good for you. I don't need to be hearing about it 30 days, you know, this month or all year long. I get it. You love what you love. Great. I'm not going to be giving you a medal or erecting a, a monument for you in some park somewhere. I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. But you know what's really, really interesting, though, about Pride Month as well? Of course, when it comes to world events, let's talk about the war in Ukraine and you might ask, well, Fernando, what does that have to do with you not, you know, celebrating Pride Month or denouncing Pride Month if some people want to look at it that way? Well, folks, it's very interesting because for a lot of Pride flags that I've looked at in New York City and in New Jersey, for example, I have seen that there are Ukrainian colors in the Pride flags. But you know what's really interesting about Ukraine? When you look at their record in that, in that country, and forget about what's going on right now. Yes, my, my, listen, my heart goes out to all the thousands of, of families that have been victimized by Vladimir Putin and Russian soldiers. But what's really interesting is about LGBT groups being all about solidarity with Ukraine. Well, guess what, folks? Same-sex marriage isn't legal in Ukraine, okay? Uh, Same-sex adoptions, yeah, that's not legal in Ukraine either. So what exactly are you supporting? Because let's be honest, if the war ends tomorrow, right, and whoever wins, Russia, Ukraine, I don't really care. I mean, it doesn't really affect my life one way or the other, okay? But guess what? Uh, people who identify as LGBT, yeah, okay, well, homosexuality is not criminalized in the Ukraine like they are in other countries, like in Russia, countries in the Middle East, so that's great to see. But guess what, folks? If you're gay or, again, LGBT, whatever, uh, guess what? Uh, you're not going to have the right to marry in Ukraine. If you're a same-sex couple and you want to adopt a child because God knows maybe there's going to be an enormous amount of children being orphaned off because of their parents being killed, unfortunately, during this uh, tragic conflict right now going on over there in Ukraine, well, guess what? If you're a same-sex couple, you can't adopt a kid either. So uh, to the LGBT advocate, you know, advocates and all these activists that are putting Ukraine colors on the pride flag, what exactly are you celebrating? Uh, again, it, it's the tone deafness. It's how myopic the LGBT groups are when it comes to, oh, we just got to be in your face about this. We, we just got to be all about pride. Again, ladies and gentlemen, be who you want to be. Love who you want to love. Whether it's players on the Tampa Bay Devil Rays or other athletes or other activists or other journalists or other elected officials, if they don't want to celebrate Pride Month because they want to cite a religious belief, guess what? Leave them alone. They can do that. Are you going to go after people who are practicing Muslims? Are you going to go after people who are practicing Jews? Because guess what? Uh, within Judaism and Islam, yeah, they don't look uh, very favorably upon uh, homosexuality either. So again, have a little perspective, have some self-awareness, and don't vilify people. Again, 
I'll, I'll say it for the very last time. Be who you want to be. Love who you want to love. Okay. I'm not going to make your life miserable. I'm not going to discriminate against you. I'm not going to bully you. I'm not going to smear you. I'm not going to engage in any character assassination. But that also doesn't mean that I'm going to sit there and pat you on the back and say, oh my God, how great. No, sorry, folks. I'm going to read it to you again because, again, it bears repeating. Dear LGBTQ plus whatever, if you don't want to be treated differently for being gay, then stop acting like being gay somehow makes you special. Your sexual orientation is neither an achievement nor is it a holiday. You've not accomplished anything simply by being attracted to someone of the same sex. You need to get that through your heads because I did. And that's why I don't celebrate Pride Month. And guess what? I never will. And that's what I'm thinking about right now. And now some local stories for your consideration. And let's uh, start in Northern Hudson County, where after redistricting and some other local developments, it seems, and again, a special shout out to Joey Fox from the New Jersey Globe, an exceptional statewide news site, uh, reporting this week that likely booted from the Hudson line, Angelica Jimenez remains defiant. With Albier Series looking to make a mayoral comeback in West New York, Jimenez will lose her seat to Gabriel Rodriguez. Now, here's some excerpts from the article, which makes things very interesting. Now, Assemblywoman Angelica Jimenez, a Democrat out of West New York, who will likely lose the Hudson County Democratic endorsement for re-election in 2023, basically due to a larger game of political musical chairs, has signaled defiance while not making any firm commitments about what she plans to do. In a statement her office put out this week, she said, quote, I love the assembly. I've been in it for 10 years, and I'm really proud of my accomplishments, Jimenez said in an interview on Friday. Listen, it's the people that elect the candidates. I focus on my track record. I focus on what I believe in, and that's the bottom line. Now, the Jersey Globe last week reported that retiring U.S. Representative Albio Sirius, also a Democrat from West New York, is gunning for a comeback as the mayor of his hometown next year during the mayoral election in May of 2023. Now, 16 years after leaving that very job to run for the U.S. House of Representatives, in exchange, incumbent mayor Gabriel Rodriguez would get the Hudson County line for the assembly, and subsequently, Angelica Jimenez would be pushed out. Now, Jimenez's two seatmates in the current 32nd district, soon to be renumbered as the 33rd, are also on the outs. State Senator Nicholas Sacco, a a Democrat out of North Bergen, has already announced his retirement in, in deferring to fellow state senator Brian Stack, a Democrat out of Union City, while Assemblyman Pedro Mejia, a Democrat out of Secaucus, thank the Lord, is likely to lose the line in favor of a, of a North Bergen candidate. I've never liked Pedro. Nice guy. I've met him. But you don't speak a lick of English, Pedro. Like, how did anyone even think that's a good idea to put someone who doesn't speak English in the state assembly? Like, someone has to read the bills to you. How do you communicate? Like, it, that was just a farce from the beginning. But again, that's North Bergen for you, to, in at least the old 32nd district, to elect someone there that is doesn't even speak a word of English. That was just asinine, but whatever. Later, Pedro, good riddance. Now, this is the thing. As the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice, Hina Patel, noted on Twitter this past week, that means an entirely new legislative delegation for the 33rd Legislative District has essentially been decided more than a year in advance with no input from the district's voters, according to her. Now, Jimenez, however, insisted that the assembly seat belongs to the people and hinted that she may consider an off-the-line run. Folks, this is a very interesting development in my hometown of West New York. Now, I remember living there when Albio Sirius was mayor. He was a great mayor, uh, very accessible, someone who was very transparent with the people. But like anyone else, he was ambitious. Who can blame him? When the opportunity is there, when you were a speaker, you know, when you went from being mayor to a assemblyman to then the speaker of the assembly and then running to be a representative in the House, I mean, this is great. I'm not going to ever smear Albio Sirius. He's been a great public servant. He's been a gentleman to me in interviews that I've conducted with him. And again, I don't have a bad thing to say about him. Why he'd want to run for mayor and then sort of endure all that executive headache that goes with being a mayor of a very densely populated town like West New York. Well, again, that's on Albio and best of luck to him. Certainly by doing that, many people are saying, oh, they might just push Gabriel out. Well, that's not the case. They're subsequently, obviously, the New Jersey Globe and other news outlets now are reporting that Gabriel Rodriguez, the incumbent mayor, will step aside and will run for the state assembly. I know Gabriel personally, he's a gentleman. He's been great with me on interviews, has always been very gracious when I've met with him. He's attended many of my charity events over the years. Not a bad word to say about Gabriel, right? Now, same thing with Angelica Jimenez. She's been a frequent 
guest of my podcast, which, by the way, folks, you can always listen to at blogtalkradio.com slash talking to Hudson. She's always been a very gracious woman to come on, talk policies in Trenton. And once again, she's been one of the more transparent legislators we've ever seen in Hudson County history. It's a shame. I know that maybe some people might start saying, well, that's one less woman in the assembly. This is wrong. We're still keeping someone who's Hispanic in the assembly. We're just changing the gender. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, backroom deals happen all the time. We know that with the, we, the agreement between State Senator Sacco and State Senator Stack, when it came to the new 33rd, obviously Sacco wanted a new HDDO chair. He got that in Anthony Veneri, the, the chairman of the Hudson County Commissioners, right? Uh, Stack decided to defer to West New York and Weehawken to pick the other assembly seat. And of course, he remained state senator. Folks, that's just politics. And certainly with the redistricting, we knew that Sacco was not going to be able to, to tackle Stack in a uh, sort of primary next year. And why would he? He'd get destroyed. Everybody knows that. And it's good that Nick Sacco had some self-awareness concerning that potential fate that awaited him. But folks, let's see what happens with Angelica Jimenez, because, you know, she's a defiant woman. She's strong. She's Cuban. You know, she's not going to stay quiet. But it's still a little less than a year out about what's going to happen in next year's primary when it comes to which Democrats will be running and representing ultimately the, th the new 33rd Legislative District in Northern Hudson County. Stay tuned for that, folks. I'm sure this story will get more interesting in the days and weeks ahead. And now let's head to Jersey City and a special thank you to Terrence McDonald with the New Jersey Monitor for his report on this story. Again, as a matter of fact, it was also featured this week in the Jersey City Times. And a shout out to Aaron Morrell, a frequent guest on Talk in the Hudson, for reporting on this story. Now, it was a very interesting column this week uh, by Terrence McDonald, again, um, shared by the Jersey City Times. And it starts off with saying, let's talk about politicians who hate the press. We hear a lot about officials quote, taking a page from Trump's playbook when they attack the media. But they've been doing this forever, from Thomas Jefferson instructing state attorney uh, generals to prosecute unfriendly um, newspaper editors to Joe Biden calling a Fox News reporter a stupid SOB. Politicians oftentimes think ill of reporters who write stories that they don't like. Trump did not invent this game. Well, number one, I'm glad that Terrence McDonald had at least the self-awareness to say this out loud because a lot of journalists won't think that. They'll think that every source of evil that's ever happened in American politics started when Donald J. Trump was elected in 2016. But let me not digress here. And it's not just presidents, though. Most reporters I know have a story or two or a dozen about an official who is the subject of aggressive reporting or unflattering media coverage and thinks of the journalists behind the reporting as the enemy. Eric Adams over in New York City acts like reporters are coming, committing treason by asking him off-topic questions at press conferences. Well, I don't know why Eric Adams is just continuing the Bill de Blasio playbook and running New York City into the ground. Have you been in the subway system? Have you seen the amount of violent crime still on the rise? Mind you, this is a former cop who ran, on that t uh, ran for mayor on this, oh, I'm going to be tough on crime, baloney. Eric Adams has been about as tough on crime as the Mets will be tough on the Yankees if they meet this year in October during the World Series. So let me just go with that. Which brings me to Stephen Fulop, the Democratic mayor of Jersey City and a potential candidate for governor in 2025. Let me just stop Terrence right there. That's not going to happen, folks. And I'll tell you why. Sources tell me that newly reelected mayor in Newark, Ross Baraka, and it seems like Mikey Sherrill, the representative in uh, northwestern New Jersey, will probably get reelected later this November. Hopefully the House still goes Republican, but again, let me not digress. Those are the big names when it comes to the Democratic nomination for governor in 2025. It's not going to be Stephen Fulop, okay? Uh, Essex County Executive Carl DiVincenzo, he's a Baraka guy, all right? A lot of people in Trenton, like Craig Coughlin and new uh, State Senate President uh, Nicholas Katari, yeah, they're Ross Baraka guys. So I don't know what Stephen Fulop's thinking, and we all know that with – U.S. Senator Robert Menendez suggesting that his son, Robert Jr., run for the now, you know, 8th Congressional District seat that Alveo Sirius has retired from. Well, that was sort of a message there that uh, the ceiling's about Grove Street for Stephen Fulop. That's where the ceiling is, okay? He's not going to seek any higher office. He's not going to be county executive, and he's not going to run for governor, much less be governor. Now, again, let me just go back to the article here. Now, uh, as we go on there, which brings me to Stephen Fulop again, and the Democratic mayor and a candidate for governor. Now, he covered the mayor for years when Terrence McDonald was here working for the Jersey Journal. Again, I have the highest amount of respect for Terrence McDonald. I don't like his politics per se, but he's a hell of a reporter and breaks news and writes exceptional columns as the editor of the New Jersey Mirror, which by the way, folks, you should check out at the, at the NewJerseyMirror.com. 
I, I've covered Philip for years, so I know firsthand what happens when he and his press operation think that a reporter is hurting his brand. Aaron Morrill does too. Now, Morrill is a lawyer and business owner in Jersey City who publishes and edits the hyper-local site, the Jersey City Times. Morrill is now on Philip's very long enemies list because the Jersey City Times is not friendly enough. Now, Morrill's outlet was initially welcomed by the Philip administration, whose spokeswoman told Morrill the site's reporters are, quote, fantastic to work with a few months after its October 2019 launch. But since then, Stephen Philip has privately trashed the site as, quote, yellow journalism, called Morrill and the site's associate publisher as, quote, big hacks as they come, and claimed that the site is, quote, a political tool to hurt me and not a legitimate news source either. His administration cut the site off from the, the city's press advisories and stopped communicating with the Jersey City Times when it had questions for news stories. Now, how does Terrence know this? Enter Jennifer Borg. Borg is an attorney whose family once owned the Bergen Record and a host of community newspapers across New Jersey. Now, she's a visiting lecturer this year at Yale University's Medium, Media Freedom and Information Access Clinic. That's where lawyers like Borg can give law students real-world legal experience and advice. Borg and her students filed public record requests to get emails full of administration officials traded with and about the Jersey City Times. And after getting them, they allege that the emails show the city retaliated against the Jersey City Times, violating the First Amendment and the site's right to due process and equal access. Again, folks, you can go to the Jersey City Times and check out the article and check out sort of the screenshots from these Oprah requests. Now, what really is interesting to me about this, and again, shout out to Terrence McDonald for exposing this, I know Stephen Fuller personally. And this is a story that I've told on my podcast. I might have discussed it before, but it bears repeating again. Back in the summer of 2012, going into 2013, when then Councilman Stephen Fulop wanted to run against the HEDO and incumbent Mayor, you know, Jerry Healy, no media outlet, not the Jersey Journal, not the Hudson Reporter, not anybody else was giving him any coverage. But you know who was? Yours truly, yes, Fernando Uribe, who was working with Hudson County TV, who is now renamed as Hudson TV, was a reporter with his own show, The Uribe Society. And I went all over the county interviewing tons of candidates. And during that summer of 2012 and going into the spring of 2013, I interviewed Stephen Fulop multiple times. Even so much that I remember when Jerry Healy had Cory Booker coming to Pacini's right near Journal Square, a very big catering hall during that election season, Stephen Fulop had a small gathering at a restaurant in downtown Jerry City. Guess who was the only journalist there to talk to Stephen Fulop? That's right, me. And I remember that during that summer and then once he won and got that upset off in May of 2013 and took office on July 1st. We had, we had a gentleman's agreement about doing interviews regularly for Hudson County TV. But once Stephen Phillips decided to get a little too ambitious for his, for his bridges, as they say, he wanted to run for governor. And then by weekly interviews at his office on Grove Street turned into monthly interviews. And then they were cut short. He wanted the questions ahead of time. And then before, oh, I'm too busy to do interviews. He had time to write a column for the Huffington Post, right? and be sort of like a guest blogger every other week on the Huffington Post, but he had no time to talk to me. And of course, as we all know, during that election cycle, we all know that billionaire Phil Murphy was able to win the, de the Democratic nomination for governor, and well, the rest is history, as businesses have been destroyed, COVID responses have not been as great as the states of Florida and Texas collectively, but whatever. The point is that I myself have had a problem with Stephen Fulop, and I've, I haven't been shy to call it out because I know that I've been in the right here. And I have text messages, and again, there's always two sides of the story, right? It could be Steven's side, my side, but then there's my screenshots. But again, let me not digress. What Terrence McDonald's talking about isn't unusual, folks, when it comes to mayors or legislators, because I run into some people in government that don't want to talk to me for whatever reason. There are people in the governor's office that call me the Hispanic Tucker. Well, that's not really an insult, because Tucker, A, has the best ratings out there in cable news. He's thought-provoking, he's informative, and he's quite funny and hilarious, which is what I tend to be on my shows, not just here, but my other media projects. But folks, this is an alarming trend, because I know Aaron Moreau personally. And there isn't a malicious bone in his body. We may not see an eye on politics, but let me tell you, what Admiral's trying to do with the Jersey Times is a very noble act. He's trying to run a new site from scratch. And I get it, maybe Mayor Fulop isn't exactly happy with the coverage, but again, folks, it's transparency, it's journalism, it's the press. And I'm, listen, as a journalist, an award-winning journalist, of course, I'm all about defending my fellow journalists, even the ones that are even atrocious. I mean, the ones that I, I, I call out every single week. But the freedom of the press, folks, you know, just like other things, should not be infringed upon. We've literally become the fourth state, right? 
about keeping people in power in check and keeping them accountable. That's all I think Aaron Murrell is trying to do, Terrence McDonald, yours truly, and many others are trying to do in the New Jersey media landscape. And I just hope that this is something that goes away because, it, quite frankly, it leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Finally, let's talk about gas prices. And a shout-out to Haresh Arindaran with the Jersey Journal uh, for this story. Now, the price of gas has skyrocketed to more than $5 a gallon across the state, and motors in Jersey City are really feeling the pain. Many have talked to the Jersey Journal about what these experiences are like. The price of regular gas at Exxon, for example, is as high as five oh nine, even going up to five ninety five in other parts of the state. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, I drove down south last week and I saw gas prices at over six dollars. What's going on here? Can Trenton give us a little bit of a relief? Uh, can maybe repeal the gas tax? Never mind what's going on in Washington, ladies and gentlemen, because you know Sleepy Joe thinks that well, let's stop domestic drilling, let's increase regulations, and let's make sure that we have to depend on foreign oil. When guess what? From 2017 to about 2020, we were drilling domestically and not relying on countries that hate us in providing oil and petroleum. But of course, that's too myopic for Sleepy Joe because maybe it's past his nap time and he hasn't really gotten aware of what's going on and the crunch that's really affecting everyday Americans, specifically those in his party. And specifically come November, folks, if Democrats want to hold on to the House, which historically they won't and hopefully they won't, uh, this should be a wake-up call that bad economic policies coming from Sleepy Joe Right, whether it's gas prices, whether it's the fact that our grocery bills are approximately two thousand dollars, or at least approaching that more than they were a year ago, as well as supply chain issues and other things, are, is making it absolutely just horrible for Americans, and it's making it horrible for New Jerseyans. I really hope the legislature in Trenton is hearing my voice here. Repeal the gas tax, okay? Try to provide some sort of relief for motorists in New Jersey who are trying to get back to work. Again, COVID's over. People are trying to get back to work. People are trying to drive down the shore, visit in-laws for the first time, maybe in over a year. But guess what? They won't be able to do that because they'll have to measure how they drive. Why? Because gas prices are at $5, and it's only mid-June, folks. I can only imagine by 4th of July or by the end of August. So Democrats don't get their act together in both the House and the Senate. They're going to lose both chambers. I'd love to see it come January 2023, but uh, we still have a long ways to go. But you know what, folks? Again, it's, it's a reminder about this fixation about being green and all that stuff and being all these eco-warriors, they make me sick. And at the same time, they're actually making me poor. And that's our show for this week. Once you get to check out all the excellent programming brought to you by the Hudson Media Group, please go to their websites, www.hmgtvshows.com, along with livestream.com slash hmgtv and the Hudson Media Group YouTube page. Don't forget to check out all the episodes of the five-time award-winning podcast, Talk on the Hudson, by going to blogtalkradio.com slash Talk on the Hudson. Make sure you like it on Facebook and also follow it on Instagram. As a matter of fact, speaking of Instagram, follow yours truly at NoFilterUribe and also on Twitter by the same name at NoFilterUribe. Make sure you like Talking Politics with Fernando Uribe on Instagram as well and also on Facebook. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, if it's unbiased, unfiltered, and unafraid, it's always Talking Politics right here with the Hudson Media Group. I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 100 Latino, via the Latino Spirit Online Magazine for 2020, 2021, and now in 2022, and also the Garden State's most beloved and factually accurate political commentator, Fernando Uribe, saying so long, and as always, thank you so much for watching.